Hey, Parkway Podcast listeners, thanks so much for joining us today on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. I pray that you are blessed today as you're listening to this. It is my sincere hope that through this moment, this podcast, God would lift your spirits, that God would lead you into the future He has prepared for you. What a privilege it is to have my friend, Brother Aaron Adams, with us today. He is an evangelist. He will be preaching for us uh, in the future, and I am thankful that God has connected our steps. So I want to introduce him and just uh, have a conversation about the things of God and things pertaining to the kingdom of God, because there's no greater subject matter in all the earth, in my estimation, to talk about God, His goodness, and where God is taking the church of the living God. So, Brother Aaron, thank you so much for being with us Thanks. today. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So tell me, um, in the context of a, of a post-COVID world, what are your thoughts about the kingdom of God and where God's directing us? Sure. Uh, I, I feel like we're, we're going to see great revival in all of this. Amen. Um, what I'm seeing around is, you know, obviously we're, we're dealing with things in churches and, and uh, facing things we've, we've never faced before. Somebody said we're in unprecedented times, and I, I heard somebody say they're ready for some precedented times, getting yes, back sir. to some precedented yes, times. Uh, but we are seeing that. But I believe we're going to see great revival. I believe, I believe we're seeing yes. God do good things. Um, you know, it's just a matter of us taking our focus off of the negative mm. and what's going wrong and all and focusing on what, what's going right. That's and right. uh, we're we're seeing great revival. I believe we're just seeing the beginning of it. And um, hard times, bad times have never stopped God from doing what He wants to do and His will being accomplished. And um, so that's that's just kind of what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling. Um, and I feel like uh, you know what what's happening today is really just kind of preparing us and getting us ready for for what is next. Yes, sir. If you were, if somebody asked and said, Aaron. You know, what kind of scripture could you give me? Has anybody ever been through what I'm going through now? Where yeah. would you lead them? Yeah. Well, as, as we talked about a little bit earlier, um, I, I was, it's been on my mind today and I, I wanted to go to it. Um, sure. I've got it right here. Yeah. Um, in Genesis, uh, the 25th chapter, where Isaac entreats uh, the Lord for his wife, Rebecca, who is barren. And, um, She's wanting a child, and so Isaac prays and um, asks the Lord that his wife would conceive and have a child. And the Bible says that the children struggled within her. Now, obviously, back in that day, they didn't have ultrasound. They didn't know that they were having twins. Uh, but the Bible says that the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And then she went and inquired of the Lord. And it's interesting to me that Rebecca has asked the Lord for this through her husband Isaac. They've asked the Lord for a child. She's now expecting children, but there's a battle going on. There's a war going on. There's trouble going on on the inside of her. And she says, if it be so, if I've really got a promise from God, why am I thus? If I've really got a promise, oh, wow. why do I have a problem at the same <clears throat> time? And I think that the church, that us as evangelists and pastors, of saints of God, We've got to recognize that it's possible to have a promise and a problem at the same time. Oh, that is so good. That it's that it's possible for us to have a promise from God and something still go wrong in our life. That just because something goes wrong doesn't mean that the promise isn't there, that the promise isn't valid, and uh, that the promise isn't going to come to pass. And I believe it's our obligation to God to trust him, even when there's some trouble and problems. And so she goes to the Lord and she asks him, if it be so, why am I thus? And then he gives her an explanation and says, there's two nations in your womb. Two manner of people are going to be separated uh, from your bowels. You, you're about to have uh, a Jacob and an Esau that are about to be born. And that's why you're walking around with a different promise. No doubt she had talked to the other ladies uh, around and said, hey, I'm feeling this. And they're saying, well, that's not quite what I was experiencing, what I was expecting. Uh, but she knew there's something different about this. And the Lord said, you're experiencing this because there's two nations in mm. your womb. There's My something goodness. so much more powerful on the inside of you. And I believe the reason we're facing some things we're facing right now is there are some unprecedented promises on the inside of the church. There's some, there's some battle and some war going on, but I believe it's because there's an unprecedented revival. I believe like, be, there's going to be some things come out of this that we've not seen before. 
And uh, that's, that's what I've been feeling. That's, that's what I'm expecting and believing. That is so profound because I, I know that I am subject to the same train of thought that how can the promise and the problem live in the same person yes. or, or around the same person? Right. And yet God is God's promises. Let me tell you a little, a little yeah, story. Absolutely. The other night, and some of our listeners, uh, you may or may not have heard this. I have told our congregation this. But I was out under the stars, and I was praying, and just uh, there in my backyard, just really having a wonderful time. But I still was overshadowed by some worry, some doubt. The Big Dipper, I looked up, and I could see the Big Dipper, and it was as though God had it turned upside down, as though He was pouring out His goodness upon my life. I mean, it was really a wonderful picture and I felt his presence at the same time. Well, then I kind of turned and I saw Orion's belt. Now, I'm not a major constellation student. Um, I, I don't know the constellations as much, but I just remember that Orion's belt have, has three stars in a row and it's, you know, it looks kind of like a belt. So I looked at the belt and as soon as I did, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, Trust me, son, I am working all things yes. for your good. Yes. I'm and I'm, as soon as that happened, I looked up at the Lord or up in the heavens and said, God, I feel like you just said this. Trust me, son. I'm working all things for your good. But God, I don't want to put words in your mouth. God, if you said this, dear Lord, please help confirm that. And I just felt like the Lord again said it was really me. It yes. was not. You didn't put words in sure, my mouth. Right. This is my intention. And then I further understood I was looking at the belt when God spoke it. Well, the purpose of a belt is to hold everything sure. together. Yeah, yeah. God was That's literally awesome. telling me, that is awesome. I'm holding it all together. Yeah. Why is, you know, if, if all this is right, why am I in this situation? Right. But God's got it all in control. Absolutely. It was, you know, it's interesting to me, um, going back to the back to the, the word here, in Scripture, we talk about the pool of Bethesda, how that at the pool of Bethesda, that at a certain season, an angel would come down and would trouble the water. And then when the water was troubled, the first one in after the troubling of the water would receive their miracle, would receive their promise. It, I believe God could have set it up to work any way he wanted to. He could have set it up uh, that they would sit at the bottom of a waterfall. The water sure. would constantly be troubled. An angel would come down and calm the water. And the first one into the calm water would receive their miracle. But that's sure. not the way he set it up. He set it up by a steel body of water. And then after the water was troubled, the first one into the troubled water received their miracle. And I believe it's along the same lines as this. The first one to take their eye off the fact that the water's troubled and recognize there's a miracle in the trouble is the one that would receive their miracle. We have got to take our eyes off of the fact that there's trouble around us and realize there's miracles in the middle of all of this trouble. That's so that good. God is wanting to do the miraculous right here in this local congregation around the world that he's wanting to do it, but he's got to have some people that are willing to take their eye off of all the trouble and everything going on and get their eye on the miracle worker, get their eyes on the miracles that are ready to happen in the middle of this trouble. And I believe that's why we're going to see miracles, signs, wonders. I believe we're going to see great revival because some people are going to wake up and yeah. realize God's wanting to work in the middle of all this. Man, that is, that's beautiful because uh, as you're talking, I am seeing in my mind's eye all the miracles that Christ did, and yet He did them to four people who were experiencing really bad situations. So the by deduction, you know, God has got to allow some things to get really bad in our yes, life sir. so that He can augment the fact that He is a miracle worker. Yeah. But we don't like the discomfort that no. comes before the miracle. Right. We That's don't it. like the trouble that has got to... Um, Beset, you know, the the beauty of the miracle is beset because it's in the middle of a trouble. That's it. Absolutely. It's uh, Peter walking on the water with Jesus. It wasn't on smooth, still water, but it was in troubled water. It was in a water where a storm was. It was the middle of the night. It was just surrounded by trouble. But And that's the environment that, that Peter asked, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus said, come on. And that's the only example we have of anyone walking on the water is in the middle of the storm. Now, everybody wants to walk on the water. Yeah. Nobody wants to go into the storm. That's you know? the truth. Everybody wants the miracles, but nobody wants the problems. But you can't separate them. And our problems, and it may not be the COVID deal. You may have problems at home. There may be things going on in your life that you're dealing with personally right now. 
get, get your eye off of the trouble and recognize there's miracles waiting to happen in the middle of this trouble, in the middle of what's going on around me. And this, we're in miracle territory. When we get into trouble, we're in miracle territory. It's where God does the miraculous. That is beautiful. I love that because I love words. And so the kind of the, the flowery language of that, that when you're in and when you're in trouble, you're in miracle territory. Yes, sir. That's Absolutely. where God says, I got to let you get into the land of trouble because that's where the miracle is. That's it. That's, that's it. so beautiful. What's some of the neatest, coolest, most wonderful, I guess, miracles that you have seen God do? Maybe for yourself or for someone yeah, else. Yeah, well, what I've seen through, I mean, in this recent time, and, and probably y'all have seen it here, I mean, to me, the, the greatest miracles that I've seen uh, recently are the, the 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 folks that were possibly cold or mm-hmm. are backslidden yes. um, that are getting wo- um, woke up in the middle of all of this going on. And uh, just this past weekend where we were at, uh, there was multiple people that prayed back through that this was their first time to pray back Thank through you, since God. all this started. Mm. But it, it it's happening because of the trouble that's happening in our world and people are recognizing and realizing I've got to get serious about this. I've got to get right. And so to me, that that there is is the greatest miracle Amen. Um, that we've been seeing uh, is the people that are coming Thank back you, to God. the house of God you, saying, God. you know, I've got to get right. I haven't been living right for a long time, uh, but it's time. I, I, people are seeing what's going on in our world and recognizing time's, time is short. It, it really is. It's time to get right. It's time to get ready. We've got people that I've talked to that uh, essentially said the same thing, and they they did, you know, they, they said, we really were staying out of church because we felt like we were being cautious, and, and I support everybody's, sure. whatever they want to do regarding their health, I support that. Right. But uh, these people that I was talking to, they said, you know what? We realize it's not the right move because our kids are suffering. We've got to get back to the house of God. And uh, we've not we've had some people that have not yet come back to church after COVID. And it is what it is. I do not sure. fault those people. I pray for those people that God would bless them. Right. But I do know this. There is something in my spirit that craves fellowship inside a move of God in Absolutely. God's house. Not Absolutely. just fellowship, you know, around a dinner table or, right. uh, you know, a fish fry or something. But I want I want to pray with people. I want to be close to people. I want to be prayed for. Sure. All those things are a desire of my spirit. Absolutely. It's, it's we've got to be connected to the body. Amen. We've got to be in the flow together. We've got to be connected to the body. And uh, the, the longer we're isolated from the body, I mean, it's just... Uh, with our natural body. You isolate a part of your body from the rest of it for very long. And it's not the body that's going to die, but it's that piece that's separated from the body. And, um, you know, that's, that's a scary thing right now. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, uh, don't separate yourself from the house of God, the people of God, if at all possible, stay connected to the house of God, to the people of God. It's, if, if I was to cut my finger off today and separate this finger from the rest of my body, it would have, my body would hurt and it's painful for the body, but the body would eventually heal up. But that finger would die because it's disconnected from the body. And uh, the same thing's true for us. If we disconnect ourselves from the body, um, oh, we, we're, so we're the ones that suffer and die. The body's going to heal. It hurts the body. And, sure. and, and no, no church likes to see anyone disconnected. Uh, and it hurts. But the body will heal up and, and go on, and it's those that have separated themselves that end up suffering right. and dying. And so that's that's why it's so important to stay connected, stay plugged in. Man, that's that's so beautiful. I, I guess sometimes we know things, but whenever they're said in a certain way, it really highlights, you know, and that's true. The body will hurt, but it will heal up. Right. And so God's body is resilient, and it's it's His body, it's right. His church. Yes, but if I separate myself for whatever reason, um, I'm going to be the one that's going to experience the greater damage. Yeah, and uh, you know, I know here uh, there's never anybody with any trouble or anything like that. No problems around the, with people, but I've seen it in other places. We'll say it that way, where somebody they they might get hurt or upset. And in order to get back at the the church, they're going to separate themselves, mm-hmm. and and it's just like I was talking about there, in in their attempt to hurt the body, it does hurt the body a little bit. It does, but the body heals up and moves on. And I've seen those same people 
just wither up and die because they've yeah. separated themselves trying to to hurt somebody else. It just it, it doesn't work that way. And so I would encourage anybody, don't disconnect from the body. Whatever you got to do, stay connected. That's the truth. Stay connected to the body. Well, man, what else has God been talking to you about? Just um, about, I guess, you know, the future. I know God is is giving us great revival. We're going to have that. But, sure. man, I, I love just hearing um, men of God speak. In fact, whenever I was a kid growing up in my dad's house, we would have preachers come over. And late at night, I would have school the next day, but I would not want to go to sleep. So I would lay on the stairs and I would hook my <laughs> toes to the top of the stairs and I would lay there so I could listen. And my mom and dad, Jason, are you asleep? And I, they'd hear me run upstairs, jump in bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to listen. So I sure. love talking to men of God and hearing what the Lord is talking to you right. about. Yeah. So uh, I was the same way. I, I loved to hear preachers talk and uh, eavesdrop and listen in. Yes. Uh, but what, what I have been... Uh, feeling is for the past however many years, my whole life and a long time before that, we have just been able to do church the same mm -hmm. way. Uh, we'd have church on Sunday. We had church on midweek. Um, and we just kind of got into the routine. We just did it the same old way. And uh, this whole COVID deal taught us that sometimes things change up. And I, f I feel like it is preparing us and getting us ready to be a church that's able to adapt and to change. Uh, I believe that. Obviously not our message by any means, but our methods and realize that we're living in a changing world. And I know we've heard that, but we're seeing it firsthand. Yes, sir. And this, the church, this, the apostolic church is built for adversity. We don't do, the church doesn't do well when everything's going good. Let's just be honest. We grow complacent. We get a little lukewarm. Mm -hmm. But it's in this time of adversity, this time uh, that, that we're dealing with right now, that we're kind of learning that we've got to be willing to adapt. And this is what the church is really built for. The church is built for battle. The church right. is built oh, for that's war. So good. And um, this, this just what I'm feeling is that this is just kind of an early wake-up call to recognize and realize that this church is more than just what we do on Sunday and our midweek and all that, but this is built for battle. This is built for war. And um, I believe that's what, what we're seeing right now is a, is a preparation for what's, for what's coming. I, I don't believe... I don't believe the trouble's over, honestly. No, I, I feel no. like after, you know, maybe we get through this COVID deal, there may be something else. And uh, I believe this is just kind of getting us ready and preparing us yeah. um, for what's coming. Everybody that I've been talking to has pretty much said the same thing. They feel like the government structure that's in place, the, uh, the administration is not favorable to the things of God or the right. move of God. And and not just that, we're not against people, we're against spirits because yes, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But God has really been helping me to understand that we've got to be flexible. So the yes. the way we do church may not happen in a corporate setting, such as a big building, right. but it can happen. In fact, for those listening, I urge you, I encourage you to, uh, you know, I like the scripture in your own life. The believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So if you see somebody sick, um, God doesn't call us to heal. He does the healing. That's God right. calls us to pray. That's right. So if we will pray, God will heal. And it takes the pressure off of us. That's it. And so I love what Jeff Arnold said. He said, um, I believe it was him that said, because we often say, well, what happens if I pray and somebody doesn't get healed? He said, if you won't take the credit when they do get healed, don't take the blame when they don't. That's good. Yeah, he that's said, good. so we don't take credit or blame. That's right. God does the he, healing. He takes care of that. So that's I good. love that. Yes, absolutely. Um, it is. And, and that's what I, and just like you're saying, we've got, the church has got to be ready to adapt. And as we've seen, just, you know, within a week or two, things may change. That's and right. We've, we, you know, we did things um, just kind of the same way for so long and, and we got caught a little bit flat-footed, maybe, you know, uh, would be the way to say it with this. But I believe this has kind of um, helped us wake up and realize right. and, yes, and be ready for, yes, for what's coming uh, down the road. Because I, like you were saying, I, I believe, you know, it could get, you know, could get, I hate to say it, but it could get worse. It could but get worse. We've got we've to choose to focus on 
the positive in this and that God's going to work in all this and we're going to see great revival. You know, and the truth is we have to focus on the positive. We read with relish, I think, the book of Acts and we right. love what we Jesus. read. Right. Man, we love reading, you know, they had all things common. They, right. they broke bread from house to house. I love the book of Acts. Sure. But God is absolutely letting the screws be tightened absolutely. to where we actually, the first century is suddenly going to be looking like the last century. Right. That's it. Or, or the last yeah. century be looking like right. the first, yeah. forgive me. Yeah. So I believe that we have to get back to that template of the book of Acts. God's been dealing with me about this, and I've talked about it, and we'll do so more, that not only in doctrine, but in methodology. Yes, sir. So the house to house. They did yes, meet sir. corporately in a temple, right. but they also met house to house. Absolutely. And so anybody that's listening to this podcast, I encourage you to, if at all possible, begin to streamline and it's amazing. Five years ago, I, if you were to have told me that I would be doing this, that right. we would have 16 home groups right. meeting and we'd have upwards of 300 people meeting wow. on a Sunday evening uh, in these 16 different home groups, I would have looked at you and said, you know, with God, all things are possible, but I don't see how it's going to happen. Right. But God began to move on yeah. us as a church to do this. And I'm so thankful that he has positioned us, our leaders uh, feel a greater sense of confidence. Yes. But again, we are the product of God's design. He yes. is forming us. He is fashioning us. Yes. And like you said, He has prepared us for the battle that is in front of us. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. He he used, it, it, like you were talking about in the book of Acts even, He used adversity to push the church because the church was really, they were focused on building a mega church in Jerusalem but it was the persecution and the adversity that pushed the church to do what he called them to do, to go into all nations. And so I believe that's what we're seeing even now with this adversity and all that we're doing. It's helping to push us out of our comfort zone. Believe yeah. me, this is not my comfort zone here. I, I mean, I'm glad to be a part of the podcast, but it's pushing me out you know, of my comfort zone. And I believe that's what we're seeing happen all over. People getting pushed out um, of their comfort zone to step out and uh, do, you know, what he's really calling us to do. And Amen. I, I believe we're going to see great revival through it. Well, I'm so thankful for those of you that are watching. I want to encourage you listening. I want to um, strongly uh, urge you that you would get back to the Word of God. And as you read the Word of God, begin to highlight those moments in Scripture where God's people, His beloved people, and we are part of that covenant people, they went through some tremendous struggles. Yes. I think about Daniel, the persecution of being subject to three different administrations, three different kings, and God in it all let him rise to a place of uh, preeminence, and he, he had to be thrown into it. I mean, he literally was the subject of legislation leveled yes. against him. Right. And so they literally, through legislation, got him thrown into the lion's den. That's right. Could it be that there will be legislation that will be passed in our days that will be against us? Right. But God will allow it so that he can highlight his delivering yes. power. Yes, absolutely. I, 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 love the, I love the three Hebrew children. I love all of those stories, but living those stories. Right. In fact, I think only now am I better able to appreciate sure. Because I'm feeling some of the same Remember pressures that, pressure. there, that right. they felt. Yes. So any parting words yes. as we get ready to close? No, sir. Uh, other than I just believe we're going to see God do some awesome things through all of this, through the trouble. We've just got to get our eyes on him, get our eyes on what he's trying to do through all of this. I'm reminded of the scripture, looking unto Jesus, yes. the author and the finisher yes. of our faith. So when we look, if we look hard enough, we can always find trouble, but let's look for the triumph that literally comes through Jesus Christ. Because as the scripture says, he causes us to always triumph. His power in us is sufficient. We are designed to be in this day. If God would have wanted us to live years ago, we, that's where we'd have lived at. But God designed us for this day. So I bless each of you today. Have a great day, remainder of the Thursday as you head into the weekend. I urge you to emphasize church attendance on Sunday, but every other day of the week, emphasize personal prayer, emphasize Bible reading. Make sure your life is actively pursuing after God. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Hi, listeners. This is Scott, producer of the Parkway Podcast. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Parkway Podcast. Remember that we offer video versions of the podcast on our YouTube and Facebook Parkway Church channels, in addition to the audio versions on your favorite podcast provider, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Our Parkway Church Madison app also features the podcast and much more, such as sign-up opportunities for upcoming events and classes and connect group registrations. The app and our website, www.parkwaychurch.net, also offers service archives and the option to give to help support this ministry so that we can continue to bring you this message of hope each week. Thank you as always for listening and look forward to our next episode.